Let's take a moment to look at how we present the sample to the Raman spectrometer. Uh, we're going to talk shortly about detectors and other things. We've talked about lasers, but the sample is a critical part of this. It's, it's a big part of the, of the equation, so to speak. There are really two ways, two limiting cases that have been used heavily in Raman spectroscopy. One is 90 degree detection. In 90 degree detection, the, the laser beam enters the sample, and I'm going to draw it here as a purple beam coming down, into my sample, which I'll draw green, again as a cuvette with liquid in it just for simplicity. And the laser beam actually comes in from the bottom in some of these systems because this is a flat surface. But, but nevertheless, the laser beam comes in that way, and then the Raman light is collected this way. So that would be 90 degrees relative to this sample sitting in there. That was very common in the early days with uh, spectrometers. If you go back and you look at some of the historical books, that's the way you'll see things are done. But another way to do this is using a 180 degree optic. And again, that's, that's the other most common. And nowadays with the um, microscopes, you'll see that is very common. So for a microscope, you have, let's draw. This is my microscope objective. Okay. The Raman, or the excitation, the laser beam, is brought into the system with a little tiny mirror. Because remember, you're dealing with a laser. You don't need much of a mirror there to bring the laser in. And the laser comes through, and then it does have a little width to it. And that laser focuses down onto the sample. The sample, which I'll draw here in green. Okay then scatters the Raman light back up through the system like this, and it's collected up through the optics like that, just in straight 180 degree collection right off the surface. So that is again an extremely common way in which it's done nowadays. One of the big advantages of Raman over some of the other techniques has to do with sample preparation. As the Raman spectroscopist would tell you, there isn't any. In many cases, there doesn't need to be very much sample prep at all. You just put your surface right in here, you put it into the system, and you start collecting Raman spectra in a backscatter mode off of it. In this case, you've got a liquid contained in an NMR tube or some other uh, vessel like that. You can put a powder in an NMR tube and to redraw that just a little bit, here we've got the NMR tube, and imagine in there is my powder. In this case, I'm going to use a 180 degree backscatter. I'm going to shine the laser in on it. Then the backscattered light coming off the sample is going to be collected, in this case, by a mirror that has a hole in it, where the hole is where the laser comes through, a big block mirror with a hole drilled through it. The laser passes through, the Raman light is collected, and then directed onto my collection and detection optics. It's all very simple. Um, <clears throat> in the thermoscientific DXR Smart Raman, which is a bulk Raman spectrometer, the beam comes up from the bottom and strikes the sample, and then the light scatters back off in 180 degree mode backwards. That scattering can be from a bottle that you put on there, a powder, a, a bag that contains a sample, whatever you want, and it's just collected in 180 degrees. You can also do liquids, and as I said, with the microscope, by far and away, the most common way of doing this is 180 degree scatter. So that's just a little bit about the sample and how the sample is delivered. Let's now step back and look at the detectors and talk some about that.